Warning. The following content may be considered disturbing or unsettling to certain viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is meant for informative purposes only. Hundreds of thousands of people are reported missing every year. This is just one of them. Robert Hoagland went missing from Sandy Hook, Connecticut in 2013. Robert Hoagland was born in 1963. He was between 49 and 50 years old. And at the making of this video, he's been missing for almost nine years. Robert was a chef and a property appraiser. And his wife, Lori, was a culinary arts teacher at Newton High School. The couple lived on a road near Sandy Hook, Connecticut, and had three adult sons, Max, Chris, and Sam. When the kids were younger, Robert was working a lot. He was a chef with that job came long hours, and he realized how much he was missing out on his kids growing up. So Robert quit his job at the restaurant and got a license to become a real estate appraiser. He also took a job at a friend's law firm. Loria said that when Robert went missing, they were actually planning the next stage in their lives together, which would have been retirement. One of their sons, Max, was 24 years old and he had a history of drug addiction. Of course, like many parents, Robert and Lori wanted to do everything they could to help Max in his recovery. Not really fun fact, but a little personal fact about me. Um, my sister had a drug problem and I guess I didn't realize like the severity of it until like the last five or six years. And then I realized how bad it was. Um, and you know, I remember her dad and her mom, she's my stepsister, but she was such a big part of my life that we never said step when we were talking about each other. She was always just my sister. And anyway, um, she definitely struggled with her addiction and her parents did everything they could to help her. And I kind of got that vibe from everything that I was reading and everything that I saw. Um, on TV, on the episode of Disappeared that I watched. Um, Robert and Lori did everything that they could to help Max in his recovery. In July of 2013, Lori went to Turkey with friends. She was gone for about two weeks, and while she was there, she and Robert exchanged emails pretty regularly. The week before Lori was supposed to come home, the family had two laptops that were stolen. Robert had a feeling that they were stolen by Max and maybe he sold them to get money for drugs. During this time, he actually emailed Lori and told her that he was sorry for allowing it to happen because he felt like it was his fault since it happened while Lori was gone and that she trusted Robert to take care of Max. He felt like it was his fault and he apologized to Lori for allowing it to happen. On the evening of July 27th, 2013, Robert and Lori spoke on the phone and confirmed Robert picking Lori up from the airport in New York City when she came home. The next day, Robert used Lori's Volkswagen to go to a local bakery and pick up some bagels. He also went to the Mobile gas station and put gas in his car, or Lori's car, and also bought a map of the Eastern United States. There are cameras and security footage of Robert going into the Mobile gas station and purchasing the map. This is actually the last time Robert was seen in a public setting. When Robert got home, he and Max had breakfast. And after breakfast, Max said that Robert went off to pay some bills and actually went um, also to play Scrabble online for a while. Between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m., Robert went outside to cut the grass. One of their neighbors actually saw Max and Robert speaking and saw Robert cutting the grass. When Robert was outside, Max went up to him, said that he was going to be leaving, but he'd be back in a few hours. 
The next day, Lori was supposed to come home. However, Robert was not at the airport like planned to pick up Lori when she came home. This was around 4 p.m. and she tried to call cell phone and their house phone. Robert did not answer either phones. Lori just thought maybe he was stuck in traffic and that his cell phone died. Lori actually didn't go straight home to Newton. She actually went to a family member's house. And from there, she actually spoke to Robert's boss who said Robert did not show up for work that day. And he did not call in to say that he was not gonna show up either. When Lori finally got home, she realized that Robert was not in the house. However, his keys, phone, and prescription blood pressure medications were left home. His passport was also there. He had left his dirty clothes in the laundry and the mower that Robert was using to cut the grass was put away. Lori also found his favorite shoes, a pair of loafers that he wore all the time, especially in the summertime, and he wouldn't have left without his shoes, especially his favorite pair of shoes. There was also another pair of shoes that Robert frequently wore and he left those behind as well. When Lori finally returned home, she was waiting for Robert. Eventually though, she had learned from the Bridgeport police that Max had actually been arrested the night before. And I didn't mention this earlier, but the area that Max was arrested in is actually known to local law enforcement agencies as an area where prostitution and drugs are very, very rampant. The building that Max would frequent was also a place that he had said that Robert went to a few days before his disappearance. Max said Robert went to this building because Max had told him that the laptops were stolen when he was in the house. He said he took the car and didn't realize that the laptops were in the car. By the time he got to the place, he realized the laptops were in the car, but he didn't want to leave them in the car. So he took them inside with him. Then he says that he hid them and later on went back to retrieve the laptops. He realized that the laptops were gone, so then he told Robert. He said that Robert and Max went to the building, but Robert said to stay in the car and that he was going to handle it. The people in the building denied knowing anything about the laptops. Apparently, Max did not have permission to use the car the night that he took the laptops and that the night that they went missing. And he also reportedly took the keys when Robert was asleep. So Robert didn't know that Max basically snuck out of the house. You see, Max had only just recently moved back in with his parents. He actually moved in with his grandmother for quite some time and eventually his grandmother could no longer handle Max and his behavior. So his grandmother said he had to move back in with his parents. When Max moved back in, Lori and Robert really laid down the law for him and told him quite a few rules that he was going to have to follow in order for him to live with them again. And it seemed like Max was going to turn his life around. Max was arrested and he was charged with third degree trespassing. 17 days after his dad went missing, he was finally released out of police custody. While he was there, the police actually had him write up a statement and they actually sent off the statement to the FBI in order for them to take a look at his handwriting. They did a handwriting analysis, so to speak. And then with that, they realized that he was actually telling the truth. Another thing that I didn't mention was that on July 25th, $600 was actually taken out of the family's bank account. There is video footage of Robert going into the bank to take the money out. Now, I think most ATMs have like a $500 limit. So $600, you actually have to go in and speak to somebody to withdraw it. So then they caught Robert on camera taking out the money. They also started tracking his credit card purchases and there was nothing there. With Robert missing, the family alerted the National Park Service that there was a chance that Robert had actually gone there to go on a hike by himself. Robert needed, blood Robert needed blood pressure medication, and we know from the other stories that we've talked about how important it is for people to have their medication, how important in general it is for people to have their medication. 
The thought that he left to go on a hiking trip by himself came about because he had actually planned a trip to take Max on the Appalachian Trail for about a month as a way for father and son to bond and a way for Robert to be able to connect with Max and help him kick his drug habit once and for all. And they started thinking maybe Robert was out there and he realized that a month was going to be too long to keep Max out there. They actually thought maybe he also went out there just to check it out on his own and maybe get kind of familiar with the area. Friends and other family members helped hand out flyers along the trail with Robert's picture on them, and they also had the help of the park service. They also brought his disappearance to the media. However, Robert's disappearance was overshadowed by another tragedy that happened seven months prior. And if you think long and hard about what happened in that area, it'll probably click. And I don't think you can see too much about it on YouTube. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Eventually, investigators started thinking that maybe he was a victim of foul play or that maybe that robber had committed suicide. They just weren't sure, especially when Lori actually found the missing car key that they were looking for and his wallet. They were tracking his credit card purchases and they didn't see anything and that would make sense because Robert did not have his wallet. He had actually hidden it under a doll of Lori's and he had hidden his wallet in the extra key so Max couldn't find it. Cadaver dogs were eventually brought in to search the nearby wooded area by Lori and Robert's home. They didn't find anything. They started with a one mile radius of their home of the wooded area, but they didn't find anything. So then they expanded it and they still didn't find anything. They even used sonar technology to look at Lake Zor, which was near their house as well, to see if maybe Robert was in the lake. And that unfortunately didn't turn up anything either. Eventually, Chris had to move back home to North Carolina where he was working and living, and Sam had left to go to Europe to study abroad. Until September 2013, the investigators assigned to Robert's case still weren't sure if Robert had left unwillingly or if he had left willingly. Then reports came in from Rhode Island about a man walking down Route 117 carrying a large backpack that fit Robert's description. What I didn't mention earlier was that when the boys were younger, about 19 years prior, Robert had actually left the family for a few weeks. The family decided to move to California and it was actually harder for Robert to get a job there than he had originally thought that it was going to be. Robert had a job and he told Lori one day that he was going to work and then she said he never came home. He was gone for three weeks and then Lori found out that he had actually been let go two days prior. So Robert was just kind of pretending like he was going to work. He eventually came back to his family three weeks later and things started to pick up again for the family. Years later, when he was working at the friend's law firm, he told another friend that he just wasn't happy working there. Robert had a lot going on in his personal life. He had a son with a very heavy drug addiction and he was just trying to keep it together for his family and he was working at a place where he wasn't happy. And I think we can all kind of relate to that at some point in our lives. He wanted to take care of his family and he really, really wanted to help Max the best way that he could. Even though he had left before, his family and friends were adamant that Robert wouldn't have left without telling anyone. He really loved his family and he absolutely adored his boys and he wanted to be there for them. Leaving them again wouldn't have happened. Leaving them the first time was probably a very, very difficult choice on Robert's part. Lori, of course, helps with the investigation as much as she can at this point and she's super, super cooperative. She searches his personal computer and finds a program that is on the computer that actually wipes out your search history. And it's not known whether or not that was accidentally put on there or if it was intentionally put on there to actually completely wipe out his search history or not. 
Not sure if it was routine maintenance or intentional. A family friend also hired professionals to look at his bank statements and financial records back five years to see if maybe Robert was planning this all along and it just took that long to put it into fruition, but they didn't find anything. There was nothing amiss in his financial records. They found nothing and they even looked at his work computer and they found searches in his history of an address in Rhode Island. However, that turned out to be a dead end. Then some residents in the Warwick, Rhode Island area actually said that they saw a man fitting Robert's description. And news pieces were broadcasted about Robert's disappearance and they put out something that was telling residents if they see a man fitting Robert's description, of course, to call in and let them know what they find. But that turned out to be nothing as well. There are also tips that turned out to be false leads about a man getting into a car with New York license plates one town over in a town called Brooksfield. The identification in that was also not positive. So Chris actually eventually moved back home to Newtown, Connecticut to help his mom, Lori, with this next little bit. Now this is kind of where it gets tricky and a little muddled and I'm gonna try to do my best not to get censored or sound accusative on this because it's very, very touchy. I got this information from the Disappeared episode on the IP channel and I found it very, very interesting, but not in the way like, oh, but like, just, just listen, okay. What I learned while watching the ID channel disappeared episode of Robert was that according to the family, there are a ton of pages claiming that Robert was somehow involved in the events that happened seven months before in December. Think about that again, like I said earlier in the video. Think about what happened in that town seven months beforehand. And when I say that there are a ton of pages, apparently there are about 30 pages. I didn't look this up. This is what I heard once again on the ID channel on the Disappeared episode. They said there are about 30 pages accusing Robert, basically, of being involved somehow and withholding information. And the family, of course, is saying that it isn't true. Eventually, winter came, and when the leaves fell off the trees, they once again searched the wooded area by helicopter to see if maybe they could see Robert's remains from an aerial view. They found nothing. A year later, on July 28th, 2014, family and friends gathered to remember Robert and the day that their beloved husband and family friend and dad disappeared. At this point, Robert's case has gone cold, but the investigators still keep searching. They keep looking for answers and they keep looking for clues. The Lieutenant on the case also had a billboard up from August to September featuring Robert's face and his information. One day, Lori got a Google alert saying that Robert may have been working in a restaurant in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. The family had often visited Myrtle Beach and the investigators called the police down there and asked if they could kind of do some digging into this. And then they went, they had Robert's picture and they took it to various restaurants to see if anybody can, could confirm seeing Robert. But nothing came of that either. In the disappeared episode featuring Robert's case to say his family friend, Dave Smith, seemed heartbroken and lost without him would be an understatement. You can tell just how much Robert meant to his family and his friend. They're just so desperate looking for answers. In the disappeared episode featuring Robert's case, Dave Smith, a very close family friend, is interviewed. You can tell just how heartbroken and lost he is without his friend. You can tell how much Robert is missed by everybody his family and his friends are so desperate for answers. They just want Robert home. 
Also, on the Disappeared episode, Lori says she mourns for the future and everything that it's going to hold. There are going to be weddings and there are going to be grandkids that are going to be born. And she mourns for that already. She mourns for the future. Robert's not going to be there, she says. She doesn't think that Robert is alive. Eldest son Chris says in the episode that when he has kids, he's going to have to tell them he doesn't know what happened to their grandpa. He doesn't know where he is. And that's got to be so sad. That gives me like, like a lump in my throat. Like that. That's so sad. A lot has changed in the almost nine years that Robert's been missing. According to the disappeared episode, now the episode was a few years ago. According to the episode, Chris received his master's degree in education and works or worked at an elementary school in Newtown. Sam moved to Australia and is working at a restaurant there and Max is clean. I'm not sure exactly what Robert was wearing the last time he was seen, but in the pictures that I do see, Robert has a bald head or a shaved head and a scar above his left eye, I believe. If you have any information regarding the disappearance of Robert Hoagie Hoagland, please call the Newtown Connecticut Police Department at 203 270 4255. If you do come across this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe it to my channel. And I'd also like to know what your theories are involving this case per usual, but I also ask that you remain respectful in the comments. If you are a praying person, please pray for Robert and his family. And please remember at the end of the day, we are all somebody's someone. Thank you for watching.